Facts First presents What Happened to Opie's Mother and Other Andy Griffith Show Secrets The Andy Griffith Show ran from October 3, 1960 to April 1, 1968, with a total of 249 episodes, and it was a hit. Today, the show is still played in reruns on multiple networks, and the entire series is available on DVD. If you're a fan of the show, you might think you know everything about it, but there are a few things that even the most die-hard fans of The Andy Griffith Show don't know. Real-Life Besties On the show, Andy and Barney Fife were best friends on the show. What many viewers didn't know was they played such great friends on the show because they were best friends in real life. Both men grew up during the Great Depression, in poverty. Andy grew up in North Carolina, Don grew up in West Virginia. It's something the men bonded over and became best friends. No Time for Sergeants Andy and Don they didn't meet on the set of The Andy Griffith Show. Their friendship began when they were co-stars in the 1958 film adaptation of the Broadway play No Time for Sergeants. If you've never seen it, it's worth a watch. It's hilarious. It was where they met, and they remained best friends their entire lives after that. When Don died in 2006, Andy was by his bedside. Andy died six years later, when he was 86 years old. A Joker On the set of The Andy Griffith Show, Andy loved playing practical jokes. He liked to target Don Knotts most of all. Don's real name, by the way, was Jesse, and he hated his real name. That's something that Andy liked to tease him about. It's the opposite of their characters. By the second episode, Andy says Don was really funny and his character should be as well. Getting him back The cast decided to prank Andy back one day and they stole his shoes from his dressing room. That night, he had to wear his big sheriff boots home. He took the joke in stride and the off-screen pranks moved on screen. In the episode Runaway Kid, Opie and his friends pranked Sheriff Taylor by moving his car in front of a fire hydrant so that he would get a ticket. The show's opening The opening of the show has the show's tune whistled while Andy and Opie walk together to go fishing. The scene was filmed at Franklin Canyon Park, which is located at the eastern end of the Santa Monica Mountains. Throwing a Rock When Ronnie Howard started starring as Opie, he was only six years old. He wasn't strong enough back then to throw a stone far enough into the lake. He tried several times, but he failed, so the assistant director had an idea to solve the problem. He had a prop guy stand behind a bush, and when Ronnie pretended to throw a rock, the man threw it instead. If you watch the scene carefully, you might even be able to catch the lag between the throw and the splash. Aunt B had no sense of humor. Frances Bavier is the actress who played Aunt B on the show. She was said to not really have much of a sense of humor at all. She was born into an affluent family in New York, and she was very sophisticated. She attended Columbus University and later the American Academy of Dramatic Arts. Because of all of that, she didn't find the off-screen antics of her co-stars humorous. Jim Neighbors Passing Jim Neighbors played Gomer Pyle on the show, and he was loved. When he was 87 years old, his husband, Stan Cadwallader, was with him at the time. He'd been battling with health issues for quite some time and had a liver transplant about 20 years before he died. His health began to decline shortly before he died on November 30, 2017. When his husband made a statement, he said, "...everybody knows he was a wonderful man, and that's all we can say about him. He's going to be dearly missed." Real Life Lovers On the show, Andy Taylor and Helen Crump became a couple on screen. It's believed, though, that Andy and the actress who played Helen, Anita Corsat, were lovers in real life. Andy was married at the time, though, so they were trying to keep things quiet. The couple was outed during one of the cast's many practical jokes. As a prank, one of the crew members dressed up as a waiter and delivered dinner to Andy's room. The crew member was shocked when he caught Andy and Anita in a uh, compromising position. This discovery was not supposed to be part of the prank. Andy and his wife later divorced. During his life, he was married three times. An Apology As mentioned earlier, Andy and Frances had a tense relationship during the show because she didn't approve of their off-screen antics. Fortunately, the two patched things up before she died. Shortly before that, Frances called Andy and apologized for being difficult during filming. It meant a lot to Andy to be able to clear things up and speak to her one more time. 
Andy's and Ronnie's Favorite Episodes Every cast member has one episode that they considered their favorite. Andy's favorite episode was in Season 3, Barney's First Car. In the episode, Barney uses his life savings to buy an old car, but it ends up not working. Ronnie's favorite episode was The Ball Game, and his father, Rance Howard, wrote the episode. Throughout the series, Rance helped write and he even acted in five of the episodes. Don's Favorite Episode Don Knotts' favorite episode was The Pickle Story, and it's a fan favorite as well. In the episode, Aunt Bee made a huge batch of pickles that were so disgusting, Barney referred to them as kerosene cucumbers. Due to a number of hilarious events, Andy and Barney had to consume eight quarts of the nasty pickles. The episode's pretty funny. It's obvious the men had a great time filming it, too. They quit while they were ahead. The Andy Griffith Show ended when it was at the top of the Nielsen ratings. There have only been three shows who have ever done that in TV history. I Love Lucy was the first to do it, and the last episode aired May 6, 1957. The Andy Griffith Show was second, which ended April 1, 1968. And then Seinfeld was the third, which ended May 14, 1998. Each of the shows ended on a high note, and all three are still playing in reruns. No Contract Many actors on the show arrived on the set for the first day of filming without a contract. Don Knotts was one of them. And that meant that Barney Fife could have been on the show for only one episode, which would have been awful. He's one of the most adored characters on the show. In 1999, he was ranked ninth on the TV Guide's 50 Greatest TV Characters of All Time. The Show's Biggest Mystery Opie's mother and Andy's wife is one of the biggest mysteries of the show. She's only mentioned in one episode. It was during Wedding Bells for Aunt B. Andy gets nostalgic watching Aunt B prepare for his wedding, and he tells Opie how much he loved his mother. For the rest of the series, viewers never hear about Opie's mother, and they never show a photo of her. In The Danny Thomas Show, which spawned The Andy Griffith Show, Andy says that his wife died when Opie was just the least little speck of a baby. Incredible Chemistry Producers know that when two actors have chemistry, it will totally make the show. The producers were so impressed with the chemistry between Andy and Don, they wrote up contracts for both men for one year after filming the first episode. Later, they were given a five-year contract. During the second episode of the series, Manhunt, Andy realized that Don should be the comedian, so Andy should play straight and let Don shine. Most people believe that this decision made the show the success that it was. Andy's Patrol Car the patrol car that Andy and Barney drove on the show was a Ford Galaxy. Each time a new model of a Ford Galaxy came out, a local dealership would donate a car for free. When they did, they'd take back the old car. After repainting it, they would sell it then. Since the show was so popular, they probably could have made a lot of money if they'd sold the cars the way they were when they got them back. Throughout the show's eight seasons, there were ten different cars used. The show was sponsored by the Ford Motor Company, which is why most people believe the squad car was always a Ford Galaxy 500 sedan, and today there are plenty of replicas out there. The Actors After the Show When the show ended, many of the actors moved on to different roles. While many of them are no longer with us today, they all left their marks on television forever. Ron Howard Ron Howard was known as Ronnie Howard back then. After playing Opie, the next role that really made him a star was playing Richie on the TV show Happy Days. Today, he works as a movie director. Over the years, he's won plenty of awards for his work. He won the National Medal of Art and was inducted into the TV Hall of Fame in 2013. Finally, he has not one but two stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Francis Bavier After the show ended, Francis remained in North Carolina. She fell in love with the state, so she chose not to return to New York City. She lived in Siler City, North Carolina, and in 1972, she retired. After retiring, she lived a reclusive life. She lived alone in her Siler City home, and she barely left the house. She was very private and spent most of her time in a large room in the back of the house that was barely furnished. It contained a bed, desk, television, and an end table, which she stocked with her glasses and black licorice. Jim Neighbors 
After The Andy Griffith Show ended, Jim Neighbors continued to play Gomer Pyle in a spin-off of the show, Gomer Pyle USMC. The show follows Gomer after he joined the Marines. Jim Neighbors had a great singing voice, and he recorded 28 albums throughout his career. In 2013, he came out publicly as gay, and he married his longtime partner of 38 years. Anita Corsat Anita Corsat played Helen Crump, Andy's girlfriend. Before she starred on the show, she was studying drama at Northwestern University. She dropped out of college to pursue her acting career, and when the show ended, she continued her education at UCLA. Anita returned for two of the show's reunions. The first was in Return to Mayberry in 1986, and then the Andy Griffith Show reunion in 1993. She made appearances in dozens of TV shows including Gunsmoke, The Runaways, and Rich Man Poor Man. In 1995, she passed away after a battle with cancer, and she's buried in Hollywood. Hal Smith Hal Smith played the town drunk, Otis. When Otis would get drunk, he let himself into a jail cell. He'd sleep it off in the bed of the cell, and then he'd let himself out of the cell in the morning. After The Andy Griffith Show ended, Hal landed many voiceover roles for TV and film. He played Owl in Winnie the Pooh, John Avery in Adventures in Odyssey, and Uncle Tex in The Flintstones. His wife passed away in 1992, and his health deteriorated shortly after. In 1994, he died of a heart attack. Howard McNear Floyd was Andy's slow-thinking, absent-minded barber. He was played by Howard McNear. In 1969, just two years after he left the show because of health problems, he died of a stroke. Decades later, Kurt Cobain wrote a song called Floyd the Barber for his band Nirvana's album Bleach. The story that Kurt tells in the song has many residents of Mayberry murder him. George Lindsay George Lindsay played Gomer Pyle's cousin, Goober. On the show, Goober was known for the Goober dance and his Cary Grant impressions, which were awful. After the show ended, he had roles in Hee Haw, The Twilight Zone, and Gunsmoke, among others. He was a charitable man, and through his charity, the George Lindsay Celebrity Weekend and Golf Tournament, he raised over a million dollars throughout 17 years. The proceeds went to the Alabama Special Olympics. In 2012, he died at the age of 83. Don Knotts Don Knotts played Barney Fife, and after the show ended, he played Ralph Furley on Three's Company. He also starred in many other TV shows and movies. Right before Don passed away, Andy went to visit him in the hospital. He later recalled his final words to his dear friend. He said, I know that he could hear me, and we all believe that he could hear my voice. I told him that I love him, and I told him, I said, Jesse, breathe. You gotta make this, you gotta pull through, breathe. And you know, I saw his chest heave, and I said, that a boy, keep breathing, just keep breathing. His shoulder moved, so I believe he heard my voice. Andy Griffith When the show ended, Andy starred in many TV shows, but none of them really took off. In 1986, he landed the role of lawyer Ben Matlock, and the show was titled Matlock. That show was a hit. His former co-star, Anita Corset, appeared in seven episodes of the show. In 1983, he became ill with Guylain Bear Syndrome but recovered. He also went through a quadruple bypass in 2000. In 2012, he died of a heart attack. He's buried on Roanoke Island in North Carolina, which he loved to visit. Subscribe for more!